Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of another ribbon microphone. That microphone being the Royer Labs R10, which, if I am not mistaken, is their most affordable microphone. This comes in at around $500, and if you are interested in this mic, like always, I'll throw some links in the description down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set at 100%, and I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. First off, everything comes in this hard shell carrying case. You'll get this velvety microphone cover. You'll of course get the microphone, a microphone mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a couple of catalogs. Ah, you get a sticker! <coughs> I can't do that, that's terrible for your voice. Then as far as the build quality, it feels absolutely outstanding. I think it may be one of the better feeling microphones I've ever handled. It has an all metal body which feels very robust and has a reassuring weight to it. The grill is all metal as well and has no give to it. As you move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches. On the bottom of the microphone, you will find the XLR port. And if it matters to you, this microphone is assembled in Burbank. It is not made in Burbank, but it is assembled in Burbank, which is better than nothing. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a figure eight polar pattern, a frequency response of 30 hertz to 15 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 54 dB, a max SPL of 135 dB, and an impedance of 100 ohms. Now I am rotating around the Royer R10 to 90 degrees. This should be a dead area and very quiet. Continuing around the microphone to 180 degrees. This is the second lobe of sensitivity. Continuing around the microphone to the second dead and null area. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now right here, I would typically include my pedantic, please bring pizza pronto plosive test, but I think that would potentially damage the ribbon, so I'm not going to be doing that. Moral of the story is, if you're using a ribbon microphone for vocals, please just use a pop filter. I will put a little bit of a gust of air into this so you can hear how bad it could be, though. Yikes. Now I am right on top of the R10 so you can hear the proximity effect on this thing and it is crazy. Now I'm about three inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it is sounding. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the Leet Gaming folk, now I am clickety clacking away on the sad W keys. W, not W. W. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Next, let's see how the provided mount does at isolating the microphone from bumps of the desk and the boom arm. So I'll go ahead and start by tapping on my desk. And then I'll tap on the boom arm. Now to be as thorough as possible, I'll go ahead and tap on the microphone's body to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Next, we're going to be doing a quick comparison between the Royer R10 and the couple other ribbon microphones that I currently own. And I will also be including the Shure SM7B because it's also a darker, smoother sounding microphone, has some ribbon characteristics, but it's going to be a somewhat limited comparison. First, we'll start on the microphone that we're reviewing. This is the Royer R10, six inches off, gain at 100%, and here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the first mic and hear how it compares to that. First up in the comparison is the MXL R144. This is a $100 figure eight polar pattern ribbon microphone. 
I am over here in this position to avoid phase issues with this mic because this thing has a ton of them. Very difficult to use this in a less than anechoic chamber, it seems. So gain at 100%, six inches off, and there you go. Affordable ribbon $100 microphone versus the $500 Royer R10. Let's do some more comparisons. Back on the Royer R10, here is how this sounds. As a reminder, $500 for this microphone. There you go, let's jump to the next one. Now I am back in my normal seating position, but this is the Shure SM7B dynamic microphone, $400, about six inches away from the capsule in neutral mode, and the gain is still at 100%. And here is how this microphone sounds compared to the Royer, 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 Royer R10 is what I was trying to say and failed miserably at. More comparisons. Back on the Royer R10 again so you can hear how this sounds. Let's jump to the third or fourth or fifth microphone. I have no idea and hear how it compares to that. Now I am on an absolute stunner of a microphone. This is the Bayer Dynamic M160. This is another ribbon microphone, big surprise. Goes for $700, six inches off of this, gain it 100%, and here is how it sounds. This is a hypercardioid ribbon, so it's not going to be as sensitive from the rear of it in case that's important to you. And there you go. Bayer Dynamic M160, $700, handheld ribbon microphone versus the R10. Let's do a couple more comparisons. And so it's easier on you to compare the audio from these microphones back on the R10. Here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the next microphone and compare it to that. And now I am on another absolutely outstanding ribbon microphone. This is the AEA KU5A. I do not have the high pass filter engaged and I do have phantom power engaged because this is an active ribbon. My gain was decreased to about three o'clock and I am six inches off of this thing. Here is how this sounds. I love this microphone. I love the buyer. There you go. Let's do one more comparison. And I wasn't really planning on doing this, but it's a meme at this point, so we have one more to do, and everybody knows what it's going to be. So let's compare it to that. And lastly, we are on the Neumann U87 AI, six inches off, 48 volts phantom power on, gain set at 11 o'clock, cardioid mode, 32 to $3,600, and I have to include this because I can, because it's a staple, because it gives context. There you go. Which of these was your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below, and note. Next, we're jumping to the music test, but I did something a little bit different for the electric guitar. I imagine a lot of people would be pairing this with the SM57, so I recorded the R10 and the 57 simultaneously. And during the electric guitar part, there will be four full phrases. The first will be rhythm just with the R10, then rhythm with the R10 and the 57. Then when the lead comes in, everything will be just the R10 for the first phrase. Second phrase with the lead will be R10 and 57 on all the electric guitars. <laughs> I've got a ribbon mic to test And although it is in marketed for voice Let's see how it sounds I know it's not technically a vocal microphone, but I'm gonna do the exact same tests I do on every single microphone. I know people are gonna type, Ah, it's not a singing microphone! Don't criticize it as that! Shut up. Shut, shut up. There's 
chapter markers. Skip forward if you don't want it. Skip forward. Let's go to the conclusion. The Royer R10 may not be a microphone that I fell in love with like I did with a couple of other ribbon microphones, but even though that's the case, I still understand the appeal of it and the utility. And first up, in terms of pros, this microphone is incredibly smooth. That is the reason why the majority of people buy ribbon microphones after all. Yes, they're darker. Yes, people might find them to sound a little bit muffled. But as far as the overall character and texture of the microphones, they are much smoother and much more pleasing sounding. Additionally, the build quality of this microphone feels excellent. Even if you do run into any issues, it has a five-year warranty, and y'all know I pay attention to this. I am glad to see that they are at least assembling this in the USA. Maybe in the future they will do full manufacturing in the States, but at least right now they're doing something and they are assembling in the States. And then as far as cons, this should come as no surprise to anybody because it's a passive microphone, but it has a very quiet output. You will need a decent preamp, most interfaces are going to have plenty of gain. The Focusrite has plenty of gain, but you could get a cloud lifter, a FET head, a Soyuz launcher, any of those to boost the signal a bit more. And the microphone and the mounting system do not do a great job at rejecting bumps of the mic stand or the desk. So if you're using this to record, I would get a third party shock mount or just be very careful not to touch the mic stand or any of that because it will be picked up. Then as far as my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone, on the electric guitar you get a much darker, you get a much more mid-forward sound, and you can get a lot closer to the speaker cone without it getting overly sizzly and terrible sounding. But where I think this microphone really shines on the electric is when you get to the upper register of the guitar where notes might start to get a little bit piercing. This just tamed all of that piercingness, all of that harshness, beautifully. I absolutely loved it on the upper end of the guitar. And then when you throw the SM57 in with this, you can add a bit more of that sizzle, a bit more of that bite, and it also benefits the 57 sound, which might just be a bit biting, a bit harsh, a bit sizzly. You can add a little bit more warmth and a little bit more of that really nice, smooth midsection and offset some of the character of the 57 and get a really nice pairing. Then on the acoustic guitar, I don't think anybody ought to be surprised by the fact that I say it is very round sounding. It has a lot more low mids than highs, but the highs are still present and they are very smooth, very pleasing and very soft sounding. And although I do find the sound on the acoustic to be pleasing, I don't think it would be my first pick for a mic because I like more realistic, a little bit more shiny top ends, a little bit more lively sounding. But if you're going for a darker, smoother, more intimate sound, I think this could work on the acoustic. Next up for singing, I think the microphone is tolerable for that application, but I just don't think it's the best fit. I played around with a bit of EQ and I found a cut around 200 hertz and then a high shelf around 5 kilohertz really gave a lot more usable sounds. I just wouldn't grab this microphone if I was buying a ribbon microphone for voice. If I bought this for other applications and I had it in my arsenal, absolutely throw it up and give it a shot. But if you're looking for a microphone exclusively for vocals, in my opinion, just not the best fit. I'd probably go M160 KU5A. I think they're a bit more pleasing for singing. And lastly, for spoken word, all I can say is mids, 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 smoothness, mids, smoothness, mids, more mids, and more mids. It is a very mid-forward microphone. I love it. Very unique sounding. I just don't think it's necessarily going to be the optimal sound for most people in regards to spoken word. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Royer R10? Yes, no, and maybe. First, I should point out, not everybody is going to like ribbons. These are loved by a lot of people, but if you don't like darker and smoother sounds, if you don't like mids, don't get a ribbon. Don't feel pressured into getting a ribbon. And if you don't like the sound of a darker, more mid-forward mic, don't get one. 
But if you're running a studio or you're miking up instruments that are a bit harsher and you want to get a microphone that takes out a bit of that bite and you want more of a mid forward sound from your ribbon, then absolutely I would recommend it especially if you want to pair this with a 57 and offset the 57 sizzle and harshness and you want to get a bit more mids in there, a little bit of weight, a little bit of smoothness there, I think it would be a great addition in that situation. And then as far as voice, I do love how smooth this microphone is. It is very appealing and a great character. However, I personally find myself leaning towards the Bayer Dynamic M160, the AEA KU5A. Those are the two ribbons that I've used that I've fallen in love with. Or for singing and spoken word, I do think that I preferred the Shure SM7B over the Royer R10. So I would go with one of those for spoken word or for singing if you're going for that darker, smoother sound, unless you want all the mids, all the smooth mids. And I think that's going to wrap up for this video. But like always, I want to pass the question off to you. Which of the microphones that I used in this video did you like the best? The Royer R10, the Bayer Dynamic M160, AEA KU5A, MXL R144, Sure SM7B, or U87 AI? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it? Thumbs down. Want more videos? Subscribe, click that logo down beneath me. And if you want, hit that bell icon, get notified of all the stuff that I review and demo for y'all. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button or going to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the $5 tier or higher it really does help me continue to bring you these videos. So until next time, Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for listening. I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.